There have been 500 of these types of cases uh, that have been brought to the WTO thus far. Now, not all of them work all the way through the, certainly not all the way through the legal process, uh, but there's been 500 of these. And for the United States, it's been really one of the biggest, if not the biggest actor in the system. Over 100 cases it's brought against trading partners and it's had over 100 cases brought against it, right? So the US is, is, is both the architect of the system, uh, but it's most active engager in the system, okay? There's been a couple hundred of these disputes that have, you know, reached the stage of, of having important legal decisions, panel reports, appeals, all that stuff made. So there's a lot of jurisprudence out there. But all that being said, there's really only been 13 that have gone all the way through the process to reach the stage where it's up to the WTO to determine the retaliatory compensation that's going to be there if we can't come up to a, a, a negotiated settlement. Only 13 real examples that we can look at to help inform us as to figuring out by how much trading partners would potentially be allowed to retaliate against us if this policy, this tax reform policy were to be ruled WTO illegal. So we've only got 13 of those. Now, of, thir of those 13, the U.S. has been heavily involved. It's been involved in two on the outbound side against the Europeans. Uh, these are the famous, the, the banana regime case in the in the Latin American countries where the U.S. was exporting banana services, Chiquita Dole, uh, and beef hormones, obviously, where we retaliated against the Europeans. The WTO set the limit on what that retaliation would be. And we've also been involved in the other side. We've had cases brought against us where countries have been authorized to retaliate. Uh, examples are the Byrd Amendment case, for example, or the FSC case, the Foreign Sales Corporation tax case as well. The sizes of these awards, and I just want to flag these for you just as a, as a, as a, as a marker, the biggest one of these retaliation cases ever is $4 billion. Europeans were authorized to retaliate against the United States in the For Foreign Sales Corporation uh, tax dispute of the early 2000s of $4 billion. That's the max. Smallest Canadian version of the beef hormones dispute with the Europeans, 11 million Canadian dollars. The most recent one is this recent US or uh, Canada, Mexico cases against the United States and country of origin labeling ruling for, for meat products. That was about a billion dollars. But you know, usually these things are a couple hundred million dollars, not big potatoes by what it is that we're talking about here. Let's suppose uh, we implement the policy trading partners see what happens. Uh, they decide to file a WTO dispute against us. They win the legal arguments, essentially that it's, I'll walk through different cases of if it's an import import restriction, like a tariff or a quota, uh, or if it's an export subsidy. Those are the two basic distinctions under WTO practice uh, for these retaliation cases anyway. What then happens next? Okay, once trading partners are authorized to retaliate, how does that work? So what the WTO does is they use on the import restriction types of disputes, what's called the trade effects formula to figure out the upper limit, the maximum amount that a trading partner is going to be permitted to retaliate against the United States. And what they do is they, the trade effects are essentially the lost, their lost export revenue associated with this policy, okay? Associated with, you know, the, the, the import restriction. So let's walk through what that might mean in this case. So the data, 2016 or so, U.S. imports globally are about $2.2 trillion. Uh, if we take the Ryan Brady border adjustment tax is about a 20%, is a 20%. And we say, well, not all of that is trade restricting, but there is this discrimination that might be enhanced, especially with the differentiation that Carolyn pointed out that arises across, uh, because of labor share, the labor, the wage deduction, essentially. So let's suppose the labor share across the U.S. economy averages out to about 50%. I'm just using rough numbers here so we can see magnitudes. So this basically means this thing is equivalent to like a 10% tariff, okay? 10% tariff, uh, you need to think about, well, what's the trade elasticity of, of a tariff? Suppose it's one, right? So a 1% tariff leads to a 1% reduction in trade. Well, starting from $2.2 trillion then, a 10% equivalent import tax, uh, or trade restriction is going to eliminate essentially $220 billion worth of trading partners exports into the United States, $220 billion. Okay. That's the amount by which if the WTO just dusted off the shelf, it's formula for how it's done retaliation in all these earlier disputes, the country of origin labeling dispute, beef hormones, bananas, they dust off that formula, right? With a, with a 10%, uh, discriminatory 
aspect of this tax, $220 billion, right? Now, obviously that is just orders of magnitude above anything that WTO has ever dealt with. The biggest retaliation ever authorized to date was $4 billion in the FSC case. This is $220 billion. Okay. So um, the U.S. exports at the moment are about $1.5 trillion, right? So this, these are numbers that are just huge. Okay, but that's only half of it, right? Now, they might also say it's not only an, an, an import restrictor. It's also working as an export subsidy, right? So what happens there? Well, let's just apply the same logic on the other side, an export subsidy uh, of 20%, but it's only for the you know 50% labor share that, that's getting the subsidy fine. So it's not a full 20%, it's only a 10%. Now in these export subsidy disputes, they don't look at trade effects. They actually look at a, a bigger calculation, which is to say, we're gonna actually allow trading partners to restrict trade equal to the size of the given subsidy payment that you're making here. So just working through the math, again, assuming a one trade elasticity, uh, you come up with a number that's about $150 billion for retaliation on the export side, right? So you can imagine that, okay, well, let's put the two of those things together. Trading partners are authorized to now retaliate. 220 billion, 100 and, and sorry, 60, uh, 65. Uh, I, I just can't even do the math, it's so big, right? Is, is essentially what, what, what the numbers are, right? Okay. So, so you, you see where we're going with this, right? This is just, this would be completely uh, out of hand and unprecedented for the WTO to have to handle. Now you might say, Chad, your numbers are too big, right? So, okay, the, the labor share is smaller, the elasticity is smaller, fine. So cut them in half, right? You're still talking about levels of retaliation that are unbelievably large relative to what the WTO has handled today. I'm obviously very concerned if we think we can go down a path that's not worried about the international implications of this and the potential discriminatory implications of this.